Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening everyone and RJI DOAJ workshop series for the fourth series. We already have three series uh, before today. The first and the and the, in the second we also have Lena. And today I also welcome you again Lena Shah as the managing editor of the OIJ. How are you today, Lena? Good, very good. Thank you for joining us today. So our discussion today is about peer review process in Open Access Journal. This information will be useful not only for those who are the journal managers and editor, but also all the authors. So uh, this uh, explanation will be available in RJE channel for about three or four work days uh, from now. And as usual, for today's event, we will have uh, the guest speaker, Lena Shah. And then after that, we will have a short discussion about maximum five questions to be discussed. And then after that, we will have uh, the assessment of the journal by associate editors. And I also welcome all the associate editors and that's uh, I don't I think I don't have to explain more about Lena. Lena is already popular okay. because this is the second time <laughs> she's here with us. So to make it short, I will welcome Mr. Ikhwan Arif as the ambassador of the OIJ and also as the editor uh, to have a three base or four work for our well, event today to be started. Silakan Pak Ikhwan, saya persilahkan. Baik, terima kasih. Thank you, Bu Lydia. Then I'm talking in Indonesia. Is it okay mm -hmm. with you? That's fine. That's fine. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm addressing these people uh, in Indonesia. So um, kind of uh, more uh, friendly than. But I'm, well, say, I'm speaking in English now. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> uh, okay then. All right. Um, Elena, thank you for your second chance uh, uh, for this evening. Uh, Bapak Ibu, terima kasih sudah bergabung di acara kita. Uh, ini saya kena todong, ini sama Bu Lydia disuruh ngomong. Untuk <laughs> preface, Pak. <laughs> jadi ini sesi kita keempat tentang review. Jadi sesi 1, 2, 3 sudah kita lewati, semuanya berhubungan dengan pengelolaan jurnal, polisi polisi di jurnal. Nanti sesi terakhir kelima itu tentang uh, apa archiving. Jadi nanti silakan Bapak Ibu ikut sesi terakhir kelima nanti tentang archiving. Malam ini seperti biasa uh, paparan oleh uh, pemateri, uh, kemudian dilanjutkan dengan diskusi dan setelah itu kita akan lihat bahas bedah jurnal-jurnalnya mana yang sesuai dengan uh, kaidah DOAJ umpamanya. Nanti kalau belum silahkan koreksi dan mudah-mudahan setelah malam ini bukannya malah nggak jadi daftar DOAJ tapi mau nambah untuk daftar ke DOAJ. Mungkin dari itu saja, itu saja mungkin dari saya Bu Lydia. Itu ya pendek aja udah. Ya. Terima okay. kasih. <laughs> Thank you for the preface Pak Iwan Arif. Okay, now uh, we will continue with our guest speaker today, Lena Shah. So, Lena, this is your time to mm -hmm. start your... So, table. I will share the screen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have, it's there already, the button screen in your... Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, it's starting. Okay. So, like Lydia just mentioned, uh, this is my second talk in this workshop series and I'm very happy to be presenting today. Good evening to all of you. Mm -hmm. So before I begin, uh, again, I wanted to mention that this workshop has been organized really well. I feel that, like Lydia mentioned, this workshop is not only useful for journal editors, but to the authors of research articles who are writing these articles as well. It's also useful for new journal editors who have just launched their journals and who are maybe thinking of applying to DOAJ. There's a good information for those editors who have applied already to DOAJ maybe and the application has not been successful for whatever reason. Or if your journal is already indexed in DOAJ and you would like to get a higher accreditation like the DOAJ seal, which is given to the journals that editor that adhere to higher standards 
then the talk on archiving and deposit policy will be very useful to you. So talking of standards today, one of the key, uh, hold on. Yeah. Can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay. Yes, so talking yes. of standards today, one of the key factors that distinguish a poor quality journal from a good quality journal is peer review. Peer review has become a very essential part of the journal publication process. It refers to the process where a group of people, usually researchers who are experts in the field and they belong to the same discipline as the journal and they review or they examine the quality of the research article before it gets published. Now, peer review was probably established a very long time back, maybe in the mid 20th or probably you can trace it back to much earlier. Back then the process was mainly to, it was a very constructive process back then. It was mainly used for improving the manuscript to eliminate mistakes and gaps in reasoning and to improve style, argumentation and articles. Today peer review has changed uh, in the sense that it is web-based of course and peer review today has become synonymous with quality and reliable science. It acts today as a gatekeeper to legitimate science and it also functions as a screening or a filtering mechanism. So you may be familiar with the peer review process. The, when the author writes the article, the scientists study something, they, they do research and then they, they write an article. Once they write an article, they need to publish it somewhere. So they look for a journal where they can publish their article. Once they decide on which journal that they are going to publish in, they send the manuscript to the journal editor. Now, once the journal editor receives it, uh, the editor will have a certain process of uh, looking at the article and reviewing it for timeliness, for relevance, whether it fits the scope of the journal, whether it is significant, whether the study is unique, whether it is following the methodology for that particular discipline. And if it, if it uh, passes that, then the, the editor will send it further to the reviewers. They, there may be a group of reviewers who, who are uh, associated with this journal. And once the reviewers take a look, they may come back with comments. So a couple of things can happen when the reviewer reviews the article. Uh, they can reject it outright if it does not fit with the, if it is not uh, satisfying the conditions of that particular discipline, or they may ask for certain revisions from the author. So they may add in their comments and send it back to the journal editor who will then send it back to the author to make revisions. This may go on for a few times before it is finally accepted. Or in the third case, if the paper is good, then the reviewer may pass it in the very first instance. So once it is finally accepted, the, the journal, the article finally gets published in the journal. Now, in case the article is rejected, so the story does not end there. If the article is rejected by one journal, the author may send it to another journal and then it goes on. So why peer review? For a researcher getting the article peer reviewed and published in a good journal, it has become a very important milestone in their career. Peer review is largely associated with science, scholarly work, but I think it's not very, it's not totally unique to this area. For example, uh, if you have attended a sports competition or any arts competition, any kind of competition, the judges are usually maybe former athletes or coaches from that same sport. So, it's not unique to science or scholarly work. Other than that, peer review process has been criticized for being time consuming and that it is subject to human errors, there are inaccuracies. But in spite of this, you cannot remove peer review altogether. It is still a very important and key process that can help to eliminate duplicate work, plagiarized work. Uh, it acts as a quality control measure. Uh, a quality control measure to eliminate bad science, bad quality research, and it, the work that gets published post peer review.
can be considered as relevant, credible, can be justified. And it, it also ensures that it adds something new to the literature that is already available in that particular area. So as I mentioned earlier, peer review has been criticized for not serving its purpose in some instances, but human errors and mistakes, uh, <clears throat> I believe can be reduced by adequate training and providing adequate guidance to reviewers. The Committee on Publication Ethics has, uh, this is a website, I've provided the link at the bottom. It's a very good resource. It has published a set of ethical guidelines for peer reviewers. Now, when the journal contacts reviewers to be on their board, they can be made aware of these uh, ethical guidelines. And they can all, it is also very important for reviewers to avoid any kind of personal bias. <clears throat> now, this kind of bias could be something that you're aware of, or it could be something unconscious. So the bias could be, uh, could be anything, could be considerations related to nationality, could be a political bias, could be a gender bias, or it could be something to do, some characteristics of the author, or it could even be something about the origin of the manuscript, like in India, um, we, we call it the Hyderabad syndrome. So Hyderabad is a name of a city. It's in the southern part of India. And many a times, uh, if an article, if somebody receives an article that where the author is from this particular city, then it is looked at a bit differently as compared to other places. So it's a bias. It may be unconscious or you may be aware of it. So at all times, reviewers uh, should be made aware that they must avoid personal bias in their reviews and it should not be, it should not impact the decision that is made. And further than that, uh, at all times, confidentiality must be maintained of the paper that they are reviewing of the authors and the feedback that is provided must not be abusive and it should be constructive and useful to the author. So making the reviewers aware of these guidelines and uh, basic training given to them will definitely help to Im improve the kind of peer review that is uh, being done. Now, if you are applying for DOAG, what is the DOAG criteria? Sorry. So firstly, of course, all the articles must be peer reviewed before it is published. That is one of the basic criteria for DOAG. Now, when the peer when the articles are peer reviewed, you should maintain the de you should mention the details of the peer review process and the exact type of peer review must be stated clearly on the website. The journal should have an editor editor and an editorial board. The names and the affiliation of these. Editorial review will be accepted and to a PhD or an equivalent. So what type of review would you choose for your journal? Now this infographic on your screen shows uh, seven common types of peer review. I've come across only the first and the second one, the single blind, double blind. And of course I've read and heard about open peer review and the post publication peer review. Now the single blind peer review is the process where authors do not know who the reviewers are, but the reviewers are aware of the author's identity. And throughout the review process, they know who the authors are as they continue to review the paper and make decisions. In the double blind peer review, both the authors and the reviewers do not know the identity of each other. So what the journal editor does is before he sends the manuscript to the reviewers, he ensures that the names of the author or any information that relates to the author is removed from the manuscript before it is sent to the reviewer. So the reviewer has no idea who, who the author is. Uh, this is the most common one that I have seen, the double blind peer review type. Now, uh, the open peer review has been uh, a more 
a recent uh, review model. This is because uh, publishers are trying to be transparent about their peer review. In open peer review, both the authors and the peer reviewers both know each other's identity. And the peer review report and the comments are published alongside the published version of the article. And the peer review report may, will have a DOI, it may, may have a DOI. So the review report can be cited along with the citing the published article. So this is a more transparent form of review. And there are many publishers that are uh, joining this kind of model. For example, F1000, there is uh, BMC, uh, eLife, and publishing platforms like Science Open. The last one is the, uh, not the last one, but the sixth one is the post-publication peer review, where the journal provides a platform such as a discussion forum. So once the paper is published, then anybody can go in and view the paper and put in their comments and uh, thoughts about the paper. So that's the post-publication peer review. I think the others I have not come across and uh, I, I would not, you can read about it, but I have not really come across those. So if you're planning to apply to DOAG, how does it uh, relate to the DOAG application form? There are uh, four questions. The fourth one is not there on the screen. I forgot to add that. The first question is the link to the editorial board page. And before you do your application, make sure you have the link to your editorial board page. Um, you must know what is the review type that your uh, journal will employ. Uh, make sure you have the link to that information which is on your website. And um, yeah, the fourth question is, which is not on the screen, is uh, what is the, how many weeks does it take from submission to publication? So you need to enter that information. It's a manual entry. You just need to enter that information. So I would like to highlight some concerns that uh, are specific to journals from Indonesia. Now on the screen, you'll see, this is a screenshot of a journal's peer review process, which I've taken from the website. Now everything is good, but if you see there is a highlighted here, every paper submitted will be reviewed by at least one peer reviewer. Now article reviewed by one reviewer is not acceptable. The standard is at least two or three previewers per article. This is because if the article is reviewed by one peer reviewer, it may be subject to a bias or a strong opinions that the reviewer has and it may impact the decision taken. But if it is uh, reviewed by more than one person, then the impact is not there because it is a, a, a more moderate view. Another example I have here on the screen is uh, uh, a screenshot of the peer review process and this process if you read through you will see that there is very little information about the actual review process. It says submitted art article should report original and the journal should meet criteria for consideration. It should not be applied elsewhere and it's a very short explanation but it does not explain uh, what is the review type, what is the process, uh, how many reviewers are uh, going to review each article. So it is a good practice and uh, I would highly encourage that you add all this information before, before definitely before you apply to DOAJ for indexing. Now the another question and another uh, feedback that I often give to journal editors is regarding the affiliation of editorial board, the affiliation of the reviewers and the authors. Now, as far as editorial board members are concerned, they can be from the same institution or the organization, or they could be from different organization, but there must be at least five members listed. They must have the names and the affiliation of the editorial board members should be listed. If you have a Google Scholar link pointing to their profile or an ORCID link, that is good. That is good. 
but definitely the name and the affiliation should be there on the website. Now, reviewers, uh, I highly encourage that there must be diversity in the affiliation of the reviewer members. This is because, again, uh, if I'm the journal editor and I'm from the maths department, let's say, of a university, I cannot have my colleague as the reviewer. There is a conflict of interest in that because I know my colleague and there would be a conflict of interest. So having a diversity in the affiliation of the reviewers is a very good idea and I would highly encourage that. Authors, uh, again, I encourage journals to invite authors to contribute to the journal from various institutions, organizations. Uh, try to limit the number of authors that are having some connection to the journal or the institution that the journal belongs to. Try to have a diversity and that is something that I would highly encourage. So towards the end of this presentation, I would like to provide a checklist, which would be very good if you are formulating your review policy and uh, if you are just a new journal editor or if you would like to change your review policy. One of the first things is the type of peer review. Make sure you mention what type of peer review the journal follows. An explanation of the chosen peer review. This is for the benefit of readers, so they understand what kind of peer review is going to undergo, uh, what kind of peer review the article will undergo. Um, an overview, overview of the peer review process, how much time it takes. Uh, what is the initial evaluation done by the editorial staff? How the reviewers are chosen? How many reviewers are assigned to review each article? And the review process must include opinions from at least two reviewers. Also mention the time frame for evaluation and how the outcome of the evaluation is handled. What kind of decisions are taken? Is it accept, revise, reject? What kind of decisions are taken? Um, so there is no way that we can actually go down and verify these this information that is there on the website but uh, this is something we trust when we see on the website because it is public information it is open for public scrutiny so do put this information it is very useful not just to us but to readers and potential authors now publication ethics uh, it is very important to provide information about the journal's policy on the conflict of interest. If there are disputes during review, how are those handled? What are the duties of reviewers and authors? These can be like essential guidelines that you provide. And you can use the guidelines that are laid down by these international bodies like COP and other, other societies and organizations. Finally, the editorial board. The editorial board must have a minimum of five members. You must provide the affiliation and the names, as I said before. And providing reviewers is good. It is encouraged. And if it is listed, you must have at least 10 reviewers on the board. Members should be from the same discipline as the journal. I've come across some journals where the members are totally unrelated to the discipline of the journal or it does not fit within the aim and scope of the journal. So that, that, that is not uh, acceptable. So I think these are the points for a peer review, a good, for formulating a good peer review. So with this, I come to the end of my short talk and uh, there are a list of references if, uh, if you're interested in reading further, finding out more about peer review and all the different topics related to it. I hope I've uh, spoken enough and uh, I'm, I'm just relating to journal editors who may be listening in and if there are more questions on your mind, I would like to hear them. So thank you for your attention and I'll hand over back to Lydia. Okay, thank you very much, Lena, for the explanation about the peer review process and how they differ with others because each of the journals have their own uh, policy with related to this uh, process. Okay, uh, I will open for about five questions. Is that okay, Lena? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, Bapak-Ibu bisa menyampaikan pertanyaannya melalui kolom chat.
atau bisa langsung raise hand aja atau kemudian bisa langsung open mic kemudian saya persilahkan untuk di, uh, langsung berdiskusi secara langsung dan saya pesankan adalah yang saya pesankan adalah pertanyaannya harusnya uh, ada hubungannya dengan topik kita hari ini so I'm telling the audience that they can have question directly Uh, you in the chat room or directly talk to you. It's okay to use Indonesian. I will translate it to English if that's necessary. Sure, yeah. thanks. Pak Deddy Suhendra, mau bertanya, Pak? Iya, iya, Bu. Ini yang mau saya tanyakan, apakah itu setiap terbitannya, artikelnya itu boleh berbeda-beda atau minimal lima atau harus dia konsisten? Terima kasih, Bu. Itu untuk uh, apa namanya terbitannya ya? Oke. Okay. Iya, setiap terbitan Jadi, setiap apa namanya. Enggak ada, Bu. Masih. Saja. Uh, oke, okay. let's wait for the other questions. Uh, this first one asking about uh, is it uh, do you have the standard of uh, limiting the numbers of the articles? Is it it should be consistent or what? What do you think, Lena, about these questions? So each of the number or issues, uh, it should be consistent or not, in your opinion, or in uh, they need the information from you. So you're talking about the number of issues in the uh, the number of article in each issues. Oh uh, no, there there is no uh, requirement from us. Mm -hmm. So if The number is five articles. Uh, it's okay. In, and then in the second one, it rises to ten. Of mm -hmm. that, <laughs> it's fine. It's so fine. It, it's really yeah. fine for as, the as long as uh, five articles minimum in a year, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you have the minimum. Yeah. Bisa ulang Pak Iwan informasinya bagaimana? Jadi dalam. I think I think Lina Lina can explain more. Uh, that we have. Uh, minimum limit of uh, five articles in a year, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So uh, when we receive an application, um, we, they need to have published at least five articles in the current year or the last year. So that's a minimum requirement. Okay. So let's say you are a new journal and you just started publishing in 2020. This is August. If you have published five articles in any time between Jan and now, that's fine. Okay. Jadi tidak ada pembatasan ya, Pak. Uh, so you sudah Pak Deddy ya terjawab ya Pak Deddy. Okay, okay. Kan ke kolom chat. We have several questions in the chat room, Lena. But mm -hmm. the first one is come from uh, Pak Dawam. Uh, he would like to ask about using problems for peer review process. Is it acceptable for the OIJ journals? Uh, what do you mean by using problems? Uh, Pak Dawam bisa dibuka micnya. What do you mean by using pablons? Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, we, we know that we have a pablons website out there and it offers us a peer reviewing uh, process. Mm -hmm. So if we are looking for a reviewer out there uh, in pablons uh, circumstance, is it acceptable by UIG? So the reviewer, the reviewer as the reviewer is listed on Pablons. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I mean, looking for the reviewer Pablons. I don't know that we don't accept. So uh, I can get on this, but there is no such uh, criteria that we do not accept it. If I understand your question correctly. Yes, because uh, Pab I, I can add to Lina's answers. Mm. Uh, mm. Problems is not um, explaining yeah. on what is the peer review type. It's, it's uh, about who is the reviewer. So I don't think it's a uh, limitation to the uh, Problems doesn't Article is uh, the blind or uh, just blind peer review or editorial review because surface hmm. uh, reviewers. That's that's as far as that. 
Okay, Pak so, thank you, Lina and Pak Arif. You're welcome for your answer. Okay, we have several more. Now. Um, I will choose the the ones that related with the peer review process. So this is the question from Johan Arifit. Is there any difference yet between uh, when you are reviewing the journals for the OIG indexing? Is there any uh, difference uh, when you are uh, reviewing the journals between the open review, single blind, or double blind? Uh, do you think they have different value or different mark when you are when which one do you or probably I will simplify like uh, which one for you, which one is the best for the OIG journals the double blind single blind or the open review? Uh, there is no best uh, as long as there is a peer review done there is a peer review type mentioned and the whole process is mentioned on the journal website that is what we are looking for. Uh, we do not advocate any best type of peer review. Is there any limitation about the, how many round review can we do for one article minimum? Or <laughs> no. Bapak Johari, pertanyaannya terdiri with accreditation for Indonesia government. So more after after learnations about this because uh, it will be different okay the next one is from uh, 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 how if a person try to apply as a reviewer but at the same time he or she is for publication in journal what the editor should do to deal with this so, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I know this yeah. is so particular. <laughs> yeah. So, if you are the journal editor and you receive the article and article in the journal, if you all employ him as a reviewer, please see that you cannot. But I would say that. Again, like I mentioned, there has to be as reviewers. Maybe uh, one, maybe, maybe two. Have all your authors as reviewers in journal. Make sense? Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Baba Isal, for the particular questions. Okay, the next one is from Pak Ratodi. Yeah, he's here also. He, uh, how many... Sorry, I will revise my... Uh, the question. Um, of course, how, how we judge that the, the mm. ideal number of uh, journal for the uh, number of the editor for a journal is it depends on the issues or depends on what what do, uh, that's the question uh, uh, okay so, so, so yeah that's the ideal number of the editor yeah so i think uh, what you're trying to ask is uh, let's say the the journal has published i don't know maybe 100 articles then is five uh, editorial members a good number so if it's a large if it's a large yeah if it's a large uh, uh, journal uh, then the number of editorial board members must be kind of directly proportional to them because uh, how will they handle the task of uh, publishing 100 articles with just five editorial board members so it should be proportional to how, how big your journal is. Okay, for the proportional, uh, <laughs> let me, so the, the ideal, it depends on the paper and then how we call it proportional. So for example, it, it uh, published 10 articles in an issue. So uh, the number of the editor should be around five or 
how to count that i'm not good at counting so uh, as far as doj is concerned yeah we the we just state the minimum five and then the rest will be based on judgment i mean if we see like 200 articles published per issue then if you have only five or six members then there is a question maybe we will come back to you and ask you about how do they manage the task of uh, doing all the work for 100 or 200 articles so it has to be you should be able to justify it is what i would say common sense yeah the common sense <laughs> and, and nobody can give you the exact uh, number or anything but as long as you are able to justify uh, what you have i think that's good enough okay thank you nena pak rata ji uh, sudah sudah menjawab ya okay this would be the last question um uh, okay the last question is from ibu arina what is it mean by robust editorial process Uh, ah, so yeah, so robust editorial process. Uh, do you remember what else? Oh, Arina, mungkin bisa menyalakan micnya. Uh, I asked uh, the the question was to. Bu Arina is the Anna. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear my voice? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Bu Arina. Yeah, silakan Bu Arina. Sudah okay, terdengar. so um, so when my journal got rejected, it only meant that uh, your journal fails to meet the best practice principles that the AG adheres to. In particular, mm -hmm. the information on your website suggests that a robust editorial process is not followed, and then um, I have to reapply the journal after six months. Yeah. So that's the only information that I got in the email. Okay. So if if you have received that uh, feedback, that means you will need to go through the checklist that I just provided and make sure that it satisfies all the conditions. Have you mentioned the peer review type? Are the editorial board members, reviewers? Uh, go through the checklist and uh, review that again. So robust is just okay, a strong editorial you process. Very much. There must be something that is not provided on the website, which indicates that the editorial process is not strong. I will have to look deeper into your website to <laughs> give you the exact feedback. Okay, are you, thank you. Are you, going to, are you going to read to the journal or just make explanation, Lena? Huh? What? Sorry. Uh, are you going to look? At the journal, I, I can, we can ask uh, Bu Arina to give her a journal address or just, you know. Uh, uh, you mean after the talk? No, no, no I, I, th I think it's now. Oh. Now? Uh, okay, yeah. sure. Is it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Bu Arina, bisa diberikan URL jurnalnya untuk... Uh, Di kolom chat ya. Ini. Quick, just, just quick. The, the chat. Just quick glance. Uh, okay. Just a glance. The chat is disabled now. Okay, okay so. I will... Okay. You can send to me. Okay. Yes, okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's uh, move on to the last question while we're waiting mm -hmm. for the this. Atau Pak Ivan mau buka, Pak Ivan? Okay, I can share the... Okay, oh, the I think the website... Oh, Joel, G-O-L-L. -L. No, no. Uh, The website is not secure. Yeah, I got the same message. Okay. okay. Uh, why, why don't you drop me an email and I will try and okay. 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 Uh, so this would be our last question for Lena. Sure. sure. Ibu Nurul Hairina. So from your slide, uh, she said that she saw the editorial board should be from the uh, mm. some uh, from the same discipline i mean in the one discipline and the question is uh, is it okay for the editorial board that come from different uh, different disciplined different disciplines is it also affect the process of applying for the oig what do you think lena uh, so, about having different probably he uh, she has uh, more than one 
or we can say it's multidisciplined. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's say you have this journal which is totally on uh, mathematics, for example. It's a pure mathematical journal, it publishes articles on mathematics. But if you have a reviewer whose discipline is in biology, then uh, seeing the connection between biology and maths is not, is not, you can't see the connection there, right? But if it's an interdisciplinary journal and uh, let's say statistics and economics, then there is a connection there and maths. So in those cases, yeah, it is acceptable. But what we do at DOAJ is we do a spot check. We try and look at the, we don't look at all of them, but we will do a spot check and if there is something wrong, then we try and go deeper and try and search. So you have to answer your question. If it's an interdisciplinary journal, then yes, you can justify having a, a board from various disciplines. But if it's a pure sciences, pure mathematics uh, journal, then how would you justify having uh, reviewers from or editorial members from various disciplines? Bagaimana Ibu? Uh, okay, thank you, Lena, for the answer. Bu mm -hmm. Nurul, do you have any more further questions? Apakah su sudah menjawab, Ibu? Sudah ya? <laughs> Bu Nurul masih ada di sini. Sudah dijawab pertanyaannya. Apakah Ibu mau jelaskan atau tidak? Because this would be our last questions. And for those questions that already have in uh, Zoom group chat, uh, we will deliver those questions for uh, associate editors after Lena sessions. Okay. Uh, I will ask for the associate editors, probably they have uh, questions. Pak Ihwan mungkin mau menambahkan? Uh, just, something to add, it, Pak I, I think uh, there is, uh, you remember, I think two months uh, ago uh, on our meeting that there is, uh, you're asking about this journal with uh, multiple uh, reviewers uh, uh, background uh, uh, mm -hmm. for, and I must explain uh, uh, that in Indonesia we have this uh, community yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah so perhaps that that one so yeah so you are a better person to explain that so that's <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. you you understand the structure of the academic uh, a scene over there so. Yeah, yeah so that is why i asked you to explain that so that's where uh, we need associate editors and ambassadors in the local area to explain this to us now lydia there is one question from pas mas david pak david pak david yeah. pak david okay, a question minute. yeah scroll yeah 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 i, I thought up. that it will be answered by pak faisal tadi i thought that this question <laughs> ya, <Yeah>, siap. <laughs> <laughs> Jadi Pak Davik Rizal nanti dijawab sama associate editor ya, because this is about the rejections uh, for the second time. So we can do the assessment of the journal after Lena session. Right, Lena? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so I think yeah, yeah. Do you have something to say? No, I am uh, very pleased to do this workshop and uh, I just want to wish you all the best and mm -hmm. yep, uh, stay safe, stay healthy and I hope I answered your questions. Thank you, Lena, for uh, being with us uh, mm -hmm. for the second round. Don't worry, we will have probably the more round in the future. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we did that the material about uh, the OIG and all the states and, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. and also the reviewers process mm -hmm. and so on it's always developing so we still have to update it all the time mm -hmm. thank you okay. for being here uh, yeah. saya akan, uh i will start to indonesian mode to have okay so on. i will i will leave the meeting now okay thank Alina, you Lena. thank you very bye much bye. thank you very much Lena. thank you bye 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 thank bye you very bye. Much. Bye. bye thank you Lena. Baik, uh, saya rasa itu saja. Dan ini ada beberapa review. Bisa dicek, Bapak-Ibu, di Zoom Group Chat. Ada review dari Pak Faisal Sudianto untuk jurnal GC Indonesia. Silakan Bapak-Ibu yang merasa yang merasa memiliki jurnal GC Indonesia dicek. 
Kemudian ada juga dari Pak Daniel Sagala sudah mereview untuk jurnal UM Palembang, copyright notice tidak berisi kebijakan dan sebagainya sudah ada di sana. Dan untuk me, apa namanya untuk mengecek lagi ada apa sih di grup chat setelah acara ini berakhir kami tidak langsung end meeting bisa untuk dicek dicek lagi begitu. Ada tambahan lagi mungkin dari Pak Dedi atau Pak Ivan atau Pak Dudu? Cara minggu depan, Opo. Oh iya. Tapi saya... Wah, sekretaris RJI itu yang ngomong. Bagus sekali Mbak Lidia. Iya. <laughs> Baik, saya lupa. Jadi minggu depan, Bapak-Ibu, uh, temanya adalah archiving. Dan yang akan menjadi narasumber adalah Pak uh, M. Tanjil Multazam sebagai ambasador dari DOAJ sekaligus juga beliau menjadi ambasadornya Orchid dan di RJI beliau adalah ketua dewan pengawas. Jadi Bapak Ibu minggu depan acaranya kita mono language ya bahasa Indonesia full. Apa Surabayaan? <laughs> Jangan nanti yang paham cuma saya dan Pak Tansil. <laughs> eh kan dan... Mas Tansil berdua kang duduk bukan? <laughs> Gimana Pak? Mas Udah, Tansil berdua kang duduk bukan? Terserah Pak Dudu nanti bagaimana? Oh ya. Yeah. Kang Dudu ya, tuh on, enam. Kang Dudu tuh on time ya datang aja. Iya. Udah hampir Dan selesai ya. dia nggak mau. Baik. Jalan-jalan Bapak, dulu ya. Kalau ya. untuk meminimalisir uh, apa namanya hektik di hektik di uh, Zoom group chat, Bapak Ibu bisa menjapri Bapak yang ada di sini ya, asosiat editor yang ada di kampus masing-masing. Untuk kemudian eh. bisa dibedah secara pribadi kalau tidak terfasilitasi di acara ini misalnya. Hmm. Tapi untuk minggu depan silakan untuk ikut lagi dan langsung klik aja linknya sudah saya bagi dan nanti akan saya bagi lagi. Baik kalau tidak ada yang akan ditambahkan lagi Pak Ihwan karena tadi yang opening speechnya Pak Ihwan mungkin ada closing statement. Closing statement sama penyiar radio itu. Oh baik, saya serahkan ke Pak Dedi Rahman. Silakan Pak Dedi. Caranya empu. Iya. <laughs> <Yeah. Best> uh, <laughs> terima kasih kepada Bapak Ibu sekalian. Uh, pertama yang jelas, uh, <laughs> saya uh, mewakili teman-teman mungkin uh, ingin meminta maaf jika memang ini belum maksimal dan juga karena bisa, tidak bisa semua. Kita bedah dan Alhamdulillah saya juga berterima kasih dibantu teman-teman semua. Lalu betul kata uh, Mbak Lydia bahwa mungkin nanti bisa dipokuskan ke uh, beberapa AEDO Watch-nya, apalagi khususnya di masing-masing daerah. Ya, tadi mungkin salah satunya di UPI, Bandung mungkin bisa sama Kang Busro dan lain-lain. Uh, lalu kalau saya ingin mungkin uh, ingin, ingin memberikan uh, sedikit saja Uh, saran bahwa memang uh, ada baiknya editor ada di Persiti tadi betul yang kita bahas tadi se- semenja, uh, untuk memedah jurnal tadi ya kan, nah lalu juga saran saya betul juga kata Pak Iwan mengingatkan kembali bahwa reviewer yang dari luar negeri juga hati-hati itu harus di confirm apakah dia memang reviewer uh, untuk kita atau enggak karena nanti bisa di confirm sama The Watch, lalu saran saya lagi jika memang bisa dihindari untuk menulis di jurnal sendiri, mungkin baiknya dihindari jika memungkinkan. Uh, mungkin itu saja sih dari saya Mbak Lydia, karena nanti, nanti saya jadi ngedongeng lagi. Terima kasih, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Baik, Bapak Ibu, waktu sudah menunjukkan jam 21 lebih 29, satu menit lagi sudah setengah 10. Dan acara ini Kasih. sudah berlangsung dua jam setengah, berarti itu artinya. <laughs> Maka uh, saya sebagai moderator mohon maaf atas segala salah kata dan hilaf. Kita berjumpa lagi minggu depan, tentu saja dengan moderator yang berbeda, karena bahasanya bahasa Indonesia. Terima kasih. <laughs> <laughs> Ada yang ketawa. Terima kasih sudah bersabar untuk mendengarkan segala dongeng dan bedahan jurnal hari ini. Alhamdulillah. Bapak, ya, Bapak Ibu kalau mau belajar tentang pengelolaan jurnal ada di channel RGI ya. Silakan subscribe dan nyalakan loncengnya. Dan oh ya, saya perlu informasikan bahwa yang akan kami upload di channel YouTube itu hanya paparan Lena hari ini. Sedangkan untuk bedah jurnal tidak kami upload. Demikian informasinya Bapak Ibu sampai jumpa minggu depan. 
Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Enggak langsung, enggak langsung Makasih ditutup ya, nih kan? Iwan. Ya ini uh, dibiarkan dulu Pak mau dilihat ya. ini ya chatnya. Silakan ya. Bapak Ibu yang mau ngecek chatnya lagi karena bedahan para AE ada di chat secara tertulis. Berarti kopi. Eh, ya silakan. Ya, kopi betul. Uh, terima kasih Pak Faisal, Pak Dedi, Pak Busro, Pak Ratodi, Pak Ardain, Pak Daner. Tidak Pak Busro nya nggak pakai batik lagi ya? <laughs> <laughs> Nyalek ya. Nyalek. <laughs> Tadi ada Pak Daner tapi tidak ada suaranya. Terima kasih Pak Daner. Pak Andista juga hidden. Uh, Pak Andista juga di hidden ya. Tapi sudah, tapi sudah ada suaranya kalau Pak Andista. Baik Bapak Ibu jangan lupa untuk mengisi link sertifikat karena hanya dibuka sampai dengan jam 12 malam. Sebelum tidur diisi dulu supaya terkirim sertifikatnya. Kalau tidak ditemukan silakan WA admin RJI ya. Yang membutuhkan bantuan bisa ke forum RJI. Di sana nanti ada bagian sendiri yang di OAJ. Di sana bisa tidak dibedah oleh AI yang ada di sana. Jadi RJI ini karena kita kumpulan relawan di sana. Uh, biasanya dijawabnya berdasarkan siapa yang sedang on pada saat itu. Jadi Bulia Auliandari yang barusan mengirim link untuk jurnalnya, akan di, di posting di grup uh, di grup forumnya RJI ya. Kalau tidak ada, maka saya minta admin untuk end meeting. Silakan.